So this is my favorite part about teaching Fabrisada. And usually I do this with a big group and we just talk through all of these dynamics because what has been so baffling up to this point suddenly gets really clear. Now, I argued before that one of the powerful things in this book is the way it gives so much information, but then it resists you saying anything really clearly about the dynamics and the personal relationships and what's actually going on. In these diagrams, things get pretty clear. All right, so here is, from page 199 to 200, the domain of the ordinary individual. We'll see this left side is the visible, the right side is the invisible. So you're looking at this person and you can just see he's got all his stuff. That's where he lives. That's him on his farm. The invisible, sort of the magical version of it, what you're seeing is that he has force. It is not in surplus and it's equally distributed throughout his domain, throughout his family, throughout his, you know, throughout his kithing kingdom, throughout his farm and his family. However, when you look at the domain of a witch in 2001, we see something else. Visibly, they are in command of their own domain. What we also know is that they have this excess. This is an excess that just freely circulates. You don't know what to do with it. It would be a person that just seems like they desire more than they have. When you look to the invisible force, you see that they have their own domain, but they have this extra amount. That's the amount that comes in the empty circle there. And that extra amount, that is the force that is used in magic. That's the force that can be deployed. Okay, so a witch meets an ordinary individual and begins to afflict them. So we're looking here, plus positive. So here, we don't have positive and negative, but arguably... This would be positive, the force in the domain, and this would be negative, the exterior force, the force that's going to go out. So, domain of normal individual, positive, got everything going on, set up in space, positive. Now, the witch is lacking, so it takes its desires, it takes whatever it does. This would be the moment when they shake the hand or say the weird thing or whatnot, this is when the witch is moving outward visibly. However, if you look into the invisible world, you'll see that the force of the individual who's ordinary, perfectly set up. The force of the witch is negative and it has surplus energy. That surplus energy is going to go outward. And what is it going to seek? Because it's negative, it's going to seek a positive. And it's going to pull from that positive. All right, what happens when the witch actually attacks? Visibly, you'll see that the witch is in a negative state. Maybe their farm's not doing too great, one way or another. The individual is still, who's being bewitched, is still positive. However, the witch has stuck themselves, has gotten themselves in, has tapped into that positive. And where does positive go? It goes to negative. So if we look to the unwitched point, we see that, or if we look to the witch point, we see that the witch has permeated the domain of the bewitched. So it's like there's holes in your soul. It's like you are unclenched. If you were clenched, you wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to get in, but they get in because there is an unclenched spot. The witch inserts themselves, their psychic energy into the individual. And at the same time that they insert into, they begin drawing that positive energy back into the witch's domain. Not just to the surplus area, not where things are being afflicted, but right back into the witch's core domain. So what are the effects of this? If you were looking visibly, you would see that one person who was once doing well is now doing poorly. They're losing something. And as a part of that, the witch doesn't turn positive. It remains negative, but it gets a little positive in it. I'll talk about that in a second. Look at this dynamic here. The witch's surplus force goes into their victim, then removes the positiveness of the victim. And so they are enriched and they are always negative. So they can never, they can never not be wanting more. They are always jealous. 
But this positive person, this one is now losing things. That's their positiveness is being depleted. So if you look at the witch family, visibly, invisibly, visibly, you'll see that they have these positives within their domain that they've stolen, maybe from a whole bunch of other people because they're all working as witches. So these positives are things that were taken from their victims. So this would show that the witch sat has increased. Notice it's not flowing out anywhere. They're not losing anything. I do wonder if a witch can attack a witch. So over here, when we're looking at the invisible domain, they still have that surplus of power that's extending outward, but they've also pulled in positive power from a victim. Now, if an unwitcher comes in, it upsets the system. And Favrasada calls this an insulator going along with sort of the electricity metaphor. Here, the domain of the witch is interested in get, and is being enhanced, right, by the witch, by stealing from the bewitched. The unwitcher comes in and starts messing stuff up. Because here is our bewitched, positive and negative. That's the usual positive spot but there's another negative. The negative there is the unwitcher who temporarily maps onto the set of the bewitched. The unwitcher disrupts the negative influence that had been pulling the positive from the bewitched and inserts him or herself with her own negative influence into the domain of the witch. Here we can see the circulation of energy and in the invisible world, you'll see that the domain of the unwitcher is now part of the bewitched set. If you look here, you'll notice back here with the effects of the attacks of the attack, here the bewitched has no surplus energy, no magic to transact with. It can just be taken from. But here, the surplus energy of the unwitcher is now a part of the bewitched. So what happens further? The effects of this unwitching cause the, in the visible domain, we see that the unwitcher has inserted themselves into the negative witch here, right? And pulled back all the things that were stolen in the first place. The portion of stolen energy is returned to the bewitched. The, the shoe is on the other foot. However, there's likely excess. The excess is due to the witch punishing the, or the unwitcher punishing the witch. So the unwitcher punishes the witch, but that punishing like energy that's negative does not go to the bewitched. The bewitched does not become more powerful after being unwitched. And it does not go to the unwitcher either. It merely leaves the system. Where it goes, nobody knows. So, forces return to the bewitched. So this is the prosperity of their life over here in the visible world. And invisibly, the force is returned from the witch over here who's negative to the positive bewitched who still has all the power of the unwitcher and then excess energy that does not directly correspond here to the bewitch flows out. Arguably, you could also say that the unwitcher is taking excess energy from the witch and expelling it regardless. It's like, oh yeah, I can see all the energy you got. Give me that stuff from my bewitched, but I can see some other things you got hanging around there. You know what? Boom, gone. That's going somewhere else. Finally, the logic continues. If the witch is not killed, they have to go to a new domain. So if we look here, positive and negative, here is our unwitcher who continues to hang out with the bewitched. Even after they get rid of the witch, they hang around, they invest their psychic power in the formerly bewitched to keep them from getting bewitched again and to keep from the witch from coming back. And in general, creating a relationship where their pals and the previously bewitched continues to pay them. The witch still is in lack, but he's in a lot of lack right now because he lost all that energy from the unwitcher. 
So it's hungry. And a witch got to act. Witch is going to witch. So the witch finds a new ordinary individual and begins to say something or handshake or whatever. In the world of the unseen, the unwitcher's force continues to protect the client. The witch's negative energy must be deployed elsewhere, and it goes into another victim. So that's witchcraft in the bo- and the bocage. It's kind of crazy. I'm just fascinated by this book. 